Great. So thank you all for uh, coming out tonight. Thank you for being here. Um, so this was uh, put together by a coalition of groups, and I just want to thank all those groups that participated in putting this together. Um, we had uh, we, we worked with Union United, the Climate Coalition of Somerville, Jobs for Somerville, and Somerville Stands Together. Thank you all for, for uh, your input and for uh, working with us to make this happen. Also, a uh, big thank you, a lot of gratitude for the Somerville City Club for hosting us tonight. And there, are, there is a cash bar in the back, so if uh, anyone's thirsty, feel free to go grab yourself a drink and tip your bartender. Um, and also, I wanted to say a big thank you to Somerville Media Center for being here to record the event. Uh, you all just heard from Joe Lynch. Thank you so much for coming out and for helping uh, to, to record this and, and get our uh, event out there. Um, and then uh, I'm going to also extend a tentative thank you to Flatbread, who is uh, who has said that they will provide pizza tonight. Uh, the pizza is running a little bit late, but. Uh, I've been told uh, it'll be here uh, very soon. So hopefully we'll have pizza um, in the very near future from Flatbread Somerville. Um, so thank you for that. And other than that, I, uh, I also wanted to say thank you to Nate Clauser, who is the other co-chair of the Electoral Working Group, uh, and to the entire ORS Electoral Working Group for all the work that they've all put into uh, not only make this event happen, but to uh, really build an endorsement process that can help the community get to know the municipal candidates. So thank you to Nate and to the ORS Electoral Working Group for all of that work. Now, having said that, if anybody has not yet had the opportunity to um, go online and read the candidate uh, questionnaires that we've published, I'd encourage you to do so after the event. Uh, we are gonna do, we're gonna hear from our candidates tonight. They'll all have a chance to make a statement. Um, any, any candidate who's responded to our questionnaire has been invited to make a statement here tonight. Um, a couple of candidates have uh, expressed regret that they weren't able to make it. Uh, Emily Ackman had uh, hoped to make it but had something come up and she's unable to be here. Uh, Katiana has said likewise that she is not able to be here but expresses her regrets um, and sorry I don't want to leave anyone out Stephanie Hirsch also um, expresses her regrets that she was not able to make it tonight um, so other than other than that all candidates who uh, have completed our questionnaire have been invited here to, to speak uh, so we're going to hear from some candidates in uncontested races just a uh, brief statement and then we're going to go on to have a Q&A with candidates who are in contested races um, so, that being said, I want to move on to our, our uh, first group of candidates. So, um, oh, uh, we have our uh, school committee candidates in uncontested races. Um, I'm not going to try to do them from left to right because I don't want to mess anyone up. Uh, all right, I'll try. Um, so, <laughs> we have uh, you made it easy for you. On, on your, oh, you did you? Oh, you did. Thank you. Andre is very smart. Or I don't know whose idea that was. Uh, anyhow, uh, I apologize in advance if I uh, mispronounce anyone's name. But um, we have Alana Krepchen from Ward 2, running for school committee candidate. Uh, thank you. Andre Green uh, is the incumbent candidate for Ward 4, running for school committee, running for re-election. Laura Pitone is the incumbent in Ward 5 running for re-election. And I apologize, Eleanor Barish, are you the incumbent? You're not. You are running for election to school committee, unopposed. So thank you so much for being here. Um, and, now, and now I'd like to begin with Alana uh, to make a, uh, just a brief statement. Thank okay. you. Good evening and thank you all for coming tonight. I know the summer can be a very busy time for everyone, but local politics are very important. I've lived in Somerville for over 20 years, 13 of those in Ward 2. 
I never thought I'd run for any type of elected office, but then five years ago, I first volunteered to help at an Argenziano PTA event. Next thing I knew, I was on the board, then two years later, I became president. During that time, I have seen firsthand how change is made, what works and what doesn't, and how best to coordinate the efforts of teachers, parents, and school administrators. When I learned that Dan Futrell, the current Ward 2 school committee rep, was not running again, I realized that this was the logical next step for me, so here I am. Some of my current priorities include improved communication between the district and families, equity in and across our schools, increased diversity in staff hiring, more project-based learning, language instruction at an earlier age, and a more holistic approach to out-of-school time. But as a public official, my job will be to listen to the voters of Ward 2 and parents across the city about what your hopes and dreams are for our schools. All members of our school community, students, teachers, parents, and administrators across the district have insight and opinions on improving educational opportunities. I look forward to these conversations going forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And now Andre Green, Ward 4. Good evening. Um, thank you for coming. My name is Andre Green. I am running for my third term on the Summerville School Committee. Um, when I first started running for school committee four years ago, I ran on a very simple idea and plan. I would introduce myself saying, hi, my name is Andre Green. I'm running for school committee. And I believe Summerville's public schools need to work for every student. In the last three and a half years, that has been my lodestone. Um, that has been the thing that guides me in every decision I make is trying to have schools that work for every student, which the honest truth is currently we don't have. Um, but over the last three and a half years, we have made real progress from making, from, from the first time in the history of several schools, naming the so-called achieving gap as the priority of our school district to, um, thank you, to a <laughs> massive expansion in out-of-school time programming, um, which we know from the data is one of the leading causes of the so-called achievement gap, which is why I prefer to call it opportunity gap. But in the last five years, we have moved from serving roughly 250 students in after-school programming and 500 students in summer programming, of whom 24% were free and reduced lunch students, to this year for the first time ever serving over 700 students in after-school programming and 1,400 students in summer programming, of whom 51% are free and reduced lunch. So we know that we are making progress to, to, to address one of the causes of the so-called achievement gap. We're also, for the first time in the history of Somerville, really looking at the role of race in education in Somerville public schools. Um, we know, when we've looked at the data, that when you account for English language learner status, when you account for all other variables, race is still the single biggest variable in achievement in Somerville public schools. So we are working to address that. We have hired, for the first time ever, a uh, exec uh, an executive level city uh, diversity officer who started in July 1st. Um, we have passed a, a diversity and hiring part policy, which, while only a first step, means that a district that has, in 176 years, never had a uh, Latinx principal will start this fall with two. Um, but it's still the fact that we have a district that's 94% staff. staff of white staff and the district that is 60% students of color. So more work needs to be done to diversify our, works, our, our workforce, and I'm looking forward to doing that work. And the, we are at a key and pivotal point, that's why I'm running again, which is that we have made the conversation the right conversation. We're talking about equity. But you may have noticed that lots of people are talking about equity in, in the country. Very few people are doing it. Here in Somerville, I'm committed to making sure that we not just talk about equity, but do it. And that has been what I've tried to accomplish the last four years, as well as I try to accomplish the next two. And I thank you for your support, not just tonight, not just in the lectures in November, but in the hard work to come of actually bringing equity to Marvel schools over the next two, to, two, to two years. Thank you. OK, thank you, Andre. And now Laura Patone, Ward 5. Good evening. I'm Laura Patone, and I'm running to serve my fourth term 
to represent Ward 5 on the Somerville School Committee. Thank you to our Revolution Somerville for hosting this event. It is a great service to our community. In the six years since I first ran for office, there has been a great deal of change in our district, including leadership changes and a continued evolution of the school committee itself to increase community engagement and expand our longer term planning. Changes in leadership have included hiring a new superintendent in 2015, Mary Skipper, and since 2013, at least one change in representation for every seat on the school committee, which is kind of unheard of in Somerville, including three open seats in the election this November. It has been a privilege to be a voice of continuity in this time, merging successful efforts of the past with the new energy that change brings. Leadership changes have refined the school committee focus and priorities, including increased engagement through the addition of public comment at our regular meetings and hosting twice yearly coordinated office hours throughout the city. I have enhanced my own communications through more frequent newsletters and social media updates. And if you're interested in keeping informed, please register for updates at my website, lauripatone.com, or follow my Facebook page, Laura Patone Ward 5. It may seem sort of like a plug, but the, the truth is, if you don't know what's going on, you can't get involved. And I feel very passionate about trying to get the word out. So I really encourage people, um, even if you don't support me, you're not in Ward 5, just get the newsletter anyway, so you can learn something about what's going on. Um, additionally, the school committee has expanded its long-term vision, including prioritizing complex topics such as equity, which is eloquently spoken about um, by Andre Green, and enrollment um, in service of the Somerville Public Schools mission to educate the whole child, academically, socially, emotionally, and physically. With respect to equity, lots of people have lots of different perspectives and definitions for it, but I like to see it as decoupling the link between educational outcomes and any personal characteristic, including socioeconomic status or race, is at the root of achieving equity. And as Mr. Green shared, this is incredibly challenging and I'm very proud to be part of this process. For example, students of color have lower academic achievement and graduation rates, higher dropout and suspension rates, and fewer college and career opportunities than their white peers. We are responsible to address these inequities. The school committee equity policy currently in the works will establish a vision and mission for this work. A draft is available for feedback on my website, laurapatone.com, so please check it out and share your thoughts. Um, enrollment analysis is the starting point for strategy and planning activities that can shape what our schools can look like in the future. Predicting who may be coming into our schools, from where in the city, and how many, based on past enrollment, but also on future development plans in the city, considering new housing rules and construction plans, will allow leadership to make proactive facility and program plans to better meet the needs of all students and support equity efforts. And this is one of the things I think I'm most proud of, is that the school committee has really worked hard to expand our vision and tackle these really challenging topics of equity and enrollment to make good decisions moving forward. I'm excited about the school committee's focus on community engagement, equity, access, and excellence for all students. And I hope to have your support to represent Ward 5 on the Somerville School Committee. But more importantly, I ask for your engagement and input through public comment, office hours, email, or conversation. I hope to hear from you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Laura. And now uh, we'll hear from Eleanor Barish, Ward 6 candidate. Um, thank you to the organizers of this event, our hosts, and to everyone who's here tonight. I'm Eleanor Barish, and I'm running for the Ward 6 School Committee seat. I moved to Somerville a little more than 15 years ago. Five years later, having fallen in love with the community, my husband and I decided to stay. Our oldest child has been in, Sun in Somerville Public Schools for nine years, and our youngest just finished pre-K. Since moving to Somerville, I've been deepening my involvement in the community. My first job here was with Shape Up Somerville. Next came coaching for Somerville, Somerville Youth Soccer and volunteering on the board a couple of years later. Around the same time, I joined the Brown School PTA board, eventually serving as president. And finally, last summer, I began working for Food for Free as the Somerville Weekend Backpack Program Coordinator. Throughout that time and through those experiences, I've learned more about the challenges facing families in Somerville. In many cases, our public schools have provided invaluable support and resources for students and their families. I've seen how dedicated educators, counselors, liaisons, and other staff and volunteers collaborate to help children thrive. I know that our schools help strengthen families' connections to each other and to the community. 
Unfortunately, I've also heard stories about how children have struggled to succeed in Somerville Public Schools and why some families have opted out of the district for their children's education. No family should feel they need to leave Somerville Public Schools in order for their child to feel safe, feel valued, or receive the education they deserve. I know how well positioned our schools are to make meaningful differences in the lives of our children and their families. I believe that when we commit to seeing every child as an individual with unique potential and evolving needs, and when we apply resources accordingly, our public schools help make our city a better place to live for every resident. I'm running for school committee because I want to contribute to that process in a bigger way. I look forward to engaging with a variety of stakeholders in order to understand how our schools can better serve our students and the broader community. I'm inspired to increase community involvement in our schools and vice versa. I am eager to help propel forward the district's deepening commitment to equity. As Ward 6's representative on school committee, I will dedicate myself to making Somerville a great place to live and to learn for everyone who lives here, today and tomorrow. I'm committed to Somerville Public Schools because I'm committed to the future of Somerville. All right, thank you so much uh, to our school committee candidates in uncontested races.